And now, a case study of the RJC's successful 2018 independent expenditure campaign featuring Senator Kevin Kramer, Congressman Denver Riggleman, and RJC Executive Director Matt Brooks. Good afternoon, everybody. I would, uh, before we start, uh, because I think this is really one of the most interesting stories to tell, but I wanted to share something with you, and I hope e neither of you think I'm speaking out of school. Uh, this is your school. <laughs> but the, the president literally offered both Senator Kramer and Congressman Riggleman a flight back home to Washington on Air Force One, and they both uh, declined so that they could be here and they could join us and talk about uh, their race and how the RJC played a role in it. So thank you both for, uh, uh, for being here. Uh, it is an honor to share the stage with both of them uh, because they represent uh, some great wins uh, for the organization. We took a look at the map and we took a look at the political landscape uh, in uh, 2018 and it was very clear that there were a number of places that uh, we wanted to play. First of all, uh, in North Dakota, we wanted to send a message. We wanted to look for a race where we could send a message to the Democrats, where we could invest some significant resources, a uh, million dollars in, in the case of the North Dakota race, uh, for somebody who, who uh, you know, was wrong on the Iran deal. We wanted to send a message that if other groups and other organizations in the Jewish community weren't going to hold them accountable, that the RJC was going to hold the Democrats accountable for their bad votes on the Iran deal. And so we, we, decided on, uh, we decided on North Dakota, and I'll show you a little bit about what we did and let, uh, let the senator talk about the impact it had on this race. But, you know, there were also two other races on the House side that we really wanted to play with two virulently anti-Israel candidates. The, the first race was in Pennsylvania 1 with uh, Brian Fitzpatrick, and he was running against a billionaire self-funder by the name of Scott Wallace, who, in addition to just having really, really hostile views, took $300,000 of his own family foundation money to fund pro-BDS organizations. So this guy was a bad actor, and, and uh, we put in a, a big chunk of money and in a really difficult year in, in southeast Pennsylvania and the northeast as a whole, we were able to help uh, Congressman Fitzpatrick hold his seat. And the other one, which uh, really is, is a, a personal pride for me, is uh, in Virginia 5, not only am I ever live in Virginia now, but uh, uh, this candidate, Leslie Coburn, who was running against uh, Denver Riggleman, was the worst of the worst. I mean, this was a woman who wrote a book that is the reference guide that uh, all the anti-Israel bashers use to, to justify their positions. It is horrific. Um, and uh, in addition, she, would, she had, uh, uh, had tea with uh, Muammar Gaddafi. She had dinner with uh, Saddam Hussein's uh, kids, Uday and Kusei. Uh, Hussein. She traveled in these circles of just this radicalized uh, progressive left and uh, we couldn't allow her to have a seat in the, in the United States Congress. The, the interesting thing and, and why these races in particular were important is because both Coburn and Scott Wallace have the patina of acceptability. Unlike Ilan Omar and, and Ocasio Cortez and Rashida Tlaib, we know where they are. These folks look by all you know, accounts outwardly as being normal, you know, credible people, and that allows them to do a lot of mischievous things. But alas, uh, we beat them, and we beat them in every case uh, through the uh, incredible talent uh, of uh, one of our leaders, uh, Larry Weitzner, who was here, who produced and was the creative genius on uh, all of these ads that uh, were victorious. And you saw, in, oh, there's Larry right there. Was, I can't. A big round of applause for, for Larry. And in addition to being the exclusive uh, media genius for the RJC for the last 20 years, in addition to being one of my closest personal friends, in addition to uh, being uh, a, a great Jewish Republican leader and someone involved in the organization, Larry is also going to be the creative director and, and the chief television uh, maker for President Trump's re-election this year. So. Congratulations, Larry. Um, with that, what I'd like to do, and before is, is um, 
I'd like to show you the spots because uh, I think it's important to see them. And I think the first spot we're going to see, uh, I believe, is called uh, Dinner, which is the, the race that I mentioned, Congressman Riggleman's race in Virginia. Can we show that spot? Liberal Leslie Coburn chooses to eat with despots and dictators. Leslie Coburn dined with dictator Saddam Hussein's war criminal sons, Uday and Kusay, and had tea with Gaddafi. Coburn sided with America's enemies like Iran and wrote books described as Israel bashing. Coburn even supported giving Iran $100 billion. Leslie Coburn is out of touch and out to lunch. The RJC Victory Fund is responsible for the content of this advertisement. Uh, so, Congressman Riggleman, congratulations on your great win. Thank you. Um, can Thank you tell you. us about the race and how that spot uh, impacted uh, the contest? No, it impacted it a lot. Larry, thank you. It sort of went with, um, I've been in politics about 10 months, and by the way, not only did I turn down a uh, ride on Air Force One with the senator, but something more important is happening right now. If there's any Auburn fans, I'm sorry. I think my UVA is beating Auburn right now. So, uh, so um, turn down, watch. You, you, are, you guys are that important to me. I want everybody to know that right now. That's how important you are. So this was incredible. It almost uh, sort of matched, uh, I try to have a sense of humor, but it really matched what we were going through in this race. Uh, Leslie Coburn, uh, not only did it capture, and again, Larry, I thought it was brilliant. She wore a scarf everywhere she went. Uh, she was obviously a woman of the people. So um, she wore a scarf everywhere, uh, wore the same type of vest. Um, she, she tried to present herself as a farmer, but she had multiple houses. She had written a pretty damning book uh, on Israel. Uh, that really was Israel bashing throughout the book that really stated that Israel was a cabal that controlled the United States. And um, so really that commercial should be probably should be titled How to Beat an Anti-Semite. Because what it did, <laughs> what, <laughs> what that commercial did is it made it almost made it light that this was a person that was so dangerous, was so out of touch, um, was so haughty, um, could not actually could not actually even, even meet what my district was, that commercial sort of captured the zeitgeist that was going on with this individual. And people would come up to me and she said, hey, she's out to lunch, man. So, uh, so Larry, you hit it right on the head. Um, this was an individual made fun of my military service. Um, this was an individual that made up some incredibly bad stories, but also a person who couldn't seem to get her husband off Twitter, which really helped us a lot, So, uh, which really helped with the commercials. But again, without the RJC, and the reason that I would skip any flight, the reason I would skip any ball game, the reason that I'm here today is because without the RJC, I wouldn't be sitting up here and not even getting an invitation to ride on Air Force One. So that's why I'm up here, Matt. Did not know this man, um, did not know Larry, obviously. We just saw the commercial, it just popped up one day, and I'm like, that's a pretty good commercial, man. I like, that's, that's pretty cool, you know? We're gonna win. So, um, but again, thank you. That's really what it was about. And we can go into the, the specifics of the races you want, but I know the senator, we wanna get to the senator, and I know you guys are getting a little tired, and, uh, but no, it really was because of the RJC and getting out in front of things like that that put us over the top and identified the type of people we're going against. Right, thank you. Um, Senator Kramer, we're going to uh, show your spot, which is, which is called Roots. Uh, and again, it was Larry made that spot. And again, it, it was designed to showcase um, Heidi Heitkamp in a way that, you know, she talked differently back home in North Dakota, and she acted very differently uh, back in Washington. So if you don't mind, we'd like to show this spot, and then we can talk about uh, your race. Heidi Heitkamp never forgets to talk about her North Dakota values. But in Washington, Heitkamp forgot them and sided with liberals in her party by supporting the disastrous Iran deal, giving over $100 billion to a regime that promotes terrorism, kills American soldiers, and helps serious dictator slaughter innocent people with chemical weapons. Those are not our values, they are their values. The RJC is responsible for the content of this advertisement. So as I mentioned, we put a million dollars behind this ad, which uh, in North Dakota, I think, buys you a few rating points. Um, uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit. Uh, but we really wanted to dominate on this issue and make it clear that uh, the Iran deal was a, was a deal that, uh, you know, we were going to hold people accountable for. And uh, obviously, you, you, were, you ran a brilliant campaign. You ran a terrific uh, race, and, and you won. Um, and by the way, one of the reasons I, I ended up uh, 
we were we were deciding between should we try for Joe Donnelly's race in Indiana or or uh, the uh, the race in North Dakota with with uh, Senator Kramer. Uh, it turns out that Senator Kramer, uh, one of his uh, child's daughter, one of his daughter's uh, closest friends, growing up and spent a lot of time at his house, was Carson Wentz, who's the quarterback of my Philadelphia Eagles. So. I figured that would tip the scale, and so we decided to invest uh, in that race. But, Senator, if you could sort of talk about the impact that that had back home in North Dakota and, and uh, how you ended up uh, winning the race. Sure. Thanks, Matt. Thanks to all of you, and thanks to RJC for the incredible investment. Um, and I want to tell you, uh, uh, you know, the main reason I didn't take the airplane ride back wasn't just because of the million bucks. It was because I really do consider myself more pro-Israel than I do Republican. And I'm really Republican, really Republican. And um, so the, the, I'll try to put it in some, some context for you because a million dollars in North Dakota does buy a lot of points, like maybe, I don't know, 5,000 gross rating points of TV or more. Um, but to give you a sense of volume, my entire budget that I raised and spent for my own campaign was $5 million. So think about what your $1 million does. Now, she spent $25 million, and, and I have to give the president an awful lot of credit. Chris and I, my wife Chris is with me. She's, she's been my campaign manager in every successful race I've been in. I was in Congress for six years. Thank you, Chris. And she's a genius. But we turned, we turned this race down. We didn't want to do it. It was, you know, it was, I didn't, I never aspired to be a senator. Um, and this president just kept after me and kept after me. You know, I had the, the good sense to endorse him early on. I was one, a very small club member for a long time, a uh, member of a small club. But, so you take a million dollars, but you also have to do a lot of stuff before the million. You have to do a lot of research. When we did our research, we found that her vote on the Iran deal was a very big problem for her. And I don't mean out in the oil patch of Western North Dakota. It was big there, but it was one of the top issues that turned people from her in Fargo, North Dakota, which is the very eastern edge of North Dakota. And it's simple, Matt. We are people of common sense. I, I know my southern sister, Christy Nome, um, doesn't like to talk about us, but I, I'd say that the territory of Dakota is made up of people with common sense. You cannot sell a boat like the Iran nu nuclear deal to North Dakotans in, in any way, shape, or form. So. You nailed it. I mean, you nailed it in the message, in the images, and uh, we're a law, law and order state, now that along with sanctuary cities, uh, and we had the result that I love the president knows the result. He won by 11 points against somebody they said could never be beaten. I'm going to remember that line forever. Um, but, but you hit the nail on the head, and from that point on, really, it was after that ad was done running, we, we pretty much went from, you know, probably five, six point lead to a double-digit lead by the 4th of July and never trailed by less than double digits, or never, um, yeah, never got within double digits or single digits again. Um, Congressman, one of the things that uh, we actually were, we had a fun dinner the other night together, and one of the questions I asked you, which I thought was interesting, is, you know, you, you know, you've never been in politics before. You're, you ran a distill, you created a business uh, with a distillery and, and uh, uh, have a, you know, a, an exemplary military career and all sorts of things leading up to, uh, uh, to running for Congress. Um, what was the, uh, the biggest surprise that uh, you've had coming as a, as a non-politician coming into uh, the House of Representatives? I think during the campaign, theoretically, it was that you think that a campaign is brutal, but you don't know what you're going to go through until you go through it. That sounded like Yogi Berra, I think. I don't know what that was. But um, I think what's amazing is that uh, I think it was the brutality of the campaign and how it seems like, I don't know if it was Steve Scalise had said that, it seems like Democrats can lie better than the Republicans can tell the truth. And it seemed like that's, it seemed like that's what we had going over and over again as we tried to be positive at the beginning because, you know, I'm brand new. I've been in politics 10 months my entire life. So um, coming into an open seat was a brutality of the campaign. Coming into Congress, I think it's the fact that people talk about bipartisanship. You've heard Democrats say we want to do bipartisan things. But what you find out that it's really lip service, and it gets to the point is the more you try, the more you have this pushback, and there really isn't this bipartisan feeling. You're almost getting this, um, almost this us against them on the floor, and you're seeing it get a little bit worse every month. I don't know if you've noticed, 
It started out with people saying, hey, we're going to be bipartisan. You know, it's love, light, and lollipops. We have unicorns flying overhead. You know, life is grand. You know, things of that nature. But I think what surprises me the most, it is what you think it is when it comes to the belief systems uh, on the left and the right. Uh, it comes to those that are pro-Israel and anti-Israel. And also, what I found also is that, that gaslighting is real. Uh, people will say something that is totally awful, like Omar, and then come back and say, well, I didn't mean it. Those words didn't mean what I thought they meant. Well, words do have meaning, and I think when you put them together in a certain sequence and with a certain vocabulary, they are anti-Semitic. You have to call it for what it is. And I think that's what I've seen, not only the brutality of what the left will do to you on a personal level, but also the fact is you can't believe a whole lot of what's going on either uh, on the bipartisan side. And as a new guy who wants to get things done, you talk about common sense. I'm from Virginia. I hope I have a little bit of it. You know, don't go cow tipping in a rainstorm. But I think that, um, but I think that, but I think that, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but uh, don't. But anyway, I think, um, I think, I think when, what you're looking at is that you, this, is a, this is sort of an ideological war, and it's sad that you don't want it to be that way. But it's time to fight. And I think what I found out is my fight from the military, I have to translate to fight when I'm in Congress. And I thank all of you for that. Thank you. Um, Senator, I was wondering if, if you could sort of, uh, is there you know, a message that you'd like to uh, share with uh, the folks who are here today who helped in this effort and, and uh, uh, helped to fund? Sure. The, uh, no, I, I appreciate the opportunity because really the, I'm here for lots of reasons. But the first reason is to say thank you and to express it my appreciation and appreciation of the people of North Dakota, which, by the way, isn't a bastion of uh, Judaism, if you know what I'm saying. It, it's, we're a bunch of Norwegian Lutherans and Catholics and evangelicals, and like, like Governor Noam, Chris and I are evangelical Christians. We never had to be convinced to support Israel because we are raised to support Israel. I believe in what, what Lindsey Graham said, that um, I believe God when he says, you know, God will bless those who, who bless Israel, and so it's it's in our hearts. Um, but I also want to I also want to stand here and sit here as a testimony to what Vice President Pence is saying, and that is that what you do makes a big difference, and and we're going to need you like never before in this next election. So I want to be an encouragement that that it matters that you're part of this, that your activism matters, that converting that Jewish Democrats to Jewish Republicans really matters, that, that um, putting money in, in the plate really matters and makes a huge difference. And when you look, I, I think what we, we are tonight, today as much as anything is a testimony to the savviness of your organization to find the places to make the investments where it matters the most and sends the message, Matt. That's a really great point. Not only did you help knock off a, a Democrat and uh, replace her with a really strong pro-Israel Republican. But you did it at a bargain price. A million dollars is a lot of money, but it goes a long ways in places like North Dakota. So congratulations on, on making some really wise choices as well. I also want to say this. In addition to what you've done for me as an organization, um, you know, the direct contributions and, of course, the, the uh, you know, the off, offline stuff. Um, Norm Coleman and Rudy Boschwitz in North Dakota, especially among Republicans, are legends. And the reason they're legends is they were Republican senators before we had one. They were like our senators. I remember back Dave Durenberger. I can go back in Minnesota and think about the Republican senators from Minnesota who really represented, we felt like, represented us. And so Rudy, of course, did what Rudy does and, and, and held a fundraiser for me uh, along with Norm downtown Minneapolis, raised a ton of money, stayed after it, was always an encouragement. Y you guys, two things that we need in politics, accountability and have each other's backs. You know what I'm saying? So don't ever, don't ever stop doing what you're doing. And, and I just echo what Mike Pence said, dig deeper if you can. That's a, a great point to end on. And, and, and what I'd like to leave everybody with is, especially as we start to look uh, to 2020, and it's a theme that the vice president and, and the president said, elections have consequences. Uh, the fact that Denver Riggleman is in the House and not Leslie Coburn, the fact that uh, Senator Kramer is in the Senate and uh, Heidi Heitkamp no longer is, is because elections have consequences. The, the fact that Donald Trump is here and we are thanking him for moving the embassy and ending the Iran deal and uh, recognizing Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights 
etc., is because we don't have President Hillary Clinton right now. So elections matter. And so as we start to think toward 2020 with the presidential race, but also a number of our great friends who are going to have tough races uh, in the House and in the Senate, think about that. Think about the success that we have had uh, in helping these great candidates. We're going to come to you. We're going to do a lot more. And uh, it's going to be very, very important. As Senator Coleman said, this election is critical. I just like to tell Matt, I've all of a sudden became a Philadelphia Eagles fan while I was up here. It's very <laughs> odd. I, I don't know what happened. I don't all know of North happen. Dakota like, has. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everybody. We used to be Viking fans, Norm. No, no offense, but, but we're all Eagles fans now, thanks to Carson Wentz. Can I, can I just a add an, another line? Uh, to just demonstrate how important your decision was. Heidi Heitkamp supported the Iran nuclear deal. This week, I introduced the bill that uh, a resolution uh, that Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz co-sponsored uh, with me to do what the House couldn't do. And that is to pass a resolution that acknowledges, recognizes, honors the incredible contribution of Israeli Americans to our culture and our society and condemns anti-Semitism bigotry <laughs> without, it, without any fuzziness attached to it. So, but I, I want to also say this, Matt, because I think it's really important. One of the things I grieve is that, like I said up front, I'm, I'm more pro-Israel than I am Republican, and I'm really Republican, as you can tell. I grieve that the other party is becoming less pro-Israel. So if you have Democratic friends and you can't convert them to Republicanism, please challenge them to challenge their leadership. We need to be a bipartisan movement in this country. So thank you for all you do, and God bless you. Uh, thank you all. We have two great speakers left. We have the. Senator Rich, the, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and Congressman Dan Crenshaw. Stick around, because after that we have a, a wonderful gala reception to sort of bring uh, the, uh, the day to a close uh, at the Veronese Ballroom. So stick around, we got a little bit more, but uh, look forward to being with everybody else the rest of the day. Thank you all. <laughs>